Did you know that a single tumor marker can change the entire course of cancer treatment? In this video, we'll explain all you need to know about cancer markers. Tumor markers, also known as cancer markers or biomarkers, are substances in your body that can help doctors find and track cancer. These markers can be found in your tissues, blood, urine, or any uh, other body fluids. They play a crucial role in helping doctors diagnose cancer, predict how the disease will progress, and monitor how well treatments are working. Biomarkers can be genes, proteins, hormones, or other molecules that signal the presence of cancer. Biomarkers are categorized into five main types, screening, diagnostic, prognostic, predictive, and pharmacodynamic. I'll go into them in detail. Screening biomarkers help detect cancer in an early stage, providing crucial information that points to the presence of the disease in healthy people. For example, prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, is a biomarker that can be used to screen for prostate cancer in men at high risk based on their family history and ethnicity. Number two, diagnostic markers. Tumor markers can help doctors figure out if you have cancer and what kind of cancer. For example, staining lymphoid tissue for epithelial biomarkers may indicate the presence of microscopic cancer cells in the lymph nodes under the armpit. On a patient with breast cancer, those cells should not be there. When a cancer is very aggressive and the origin is not clear, specific marker can help make the correct diagnosis. Number three, prognostic markers. Prognostic biomarkers provide information about the likely course of the disease, helping to predict the overall outcome regardless of therapy. For example, certain molecular alterations like high levels of Ki67 um, in breast cancer tissue can indicate a higher likelihood of aggressive disease progression. Number four, predictive biomarkers forecast how well a patient will respond to a particular treatment. For example, the presence of HER2 overexpression in breast cancer predicts a likely response to HER2-targeted therapies such as, such as trastuzumab, for example. Number five, pharmacodynamic biomarkers show how a treatment is affecting the body, helping to monitor the response to therapy and make necessary adjustments. So you may wonder, how are biomarkers tested? The first step for biomarker testing involves a biopsy of a suspicious lesion, surgical resection of a tumor, or a blood test. These are the most typical approaches. Biopsies and surgical resections involve the removal of tissue, samples from tumors providing a direct look at the cancer cells and their genetic makeup. Examples of tissue biomarkers include the estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor, which are used in breast cancer to determine hormone receptor status and guide hormone therapy. Human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 is used also in breast cancer and gastric cancer to assess HER2 status, which influence, influences treatment decisions. KI67 is a marker used to evaluate proliferation rate of cancer cells, how aggressively they're uh, growing in many types of cancer. P53 is a tumor suppressor protein that is mutated in 50% of all cancers. ALK, anaplastic lymphoma kinase, is used in lung cancer to identify ALK positive tumors that may respond to specific targeted therapies. EGFR, epidermal growth factor receptor, is used in lung cancer to identify mutations that can be targeted with specific therapies. PDL1, programmed death ligand 1, is used in various cancers, including melanoma, lung cancer, breast cancer, and many other tumors, to evaluate the likelihood of response to immunotherapy. BRAF is used in melanoma and other cancers to identify mutations that can be targeted with specific therapies. CKIT is used in gastrointestinal stromal tumors, also known as GIST and other cancers to identify tumors that may respond to specific therapies. Blood tests are minimally invasive and can detect specific proteins circular in tumor cells or mutated DNA indicative of cancer. Examples of circular in tumor markers include the following AFP or alpha-fetoprotein, 
Uh, it's used by doctors to detect liver cancer and testicular cancer. CA-199 is used to detect pancreatic cancer and see how treatment is going. CA-125 is used to detect ovarian cancer and check how well treatment is working. CEA, or car carcinoembryonic antigen, is used to find cancers like colon cancer and see if they are coming back. HCG is a marker used to detect cancers like testicular cancer and see how treatment is going. PSA, prostate-specific antigen, is uh, used to help um, find prostate cancer and check how well treatment is working. Thyroglobulin is a marker used to check for thyroid cancer and see how well treatment is working. Finally, circular in tumor DNA, which is also known as a liquid biopsy, uh, allows to detect DNA mutations from a tumor in the blood. Other fluids can be tested for tumor markers, including urine, pleural fluid, peritoneal fluid in the abdomen, among others. Doctors use a variety of sophisticated methods in the laboratory, each designed to accurately identify these critical indicators we call tumor markers. Researchers figured out how to test multiple markers at the same time, but given the enormity of the human genome, identifying a handful of biomarkers was not enough to understand the complexity of cancer. Therefore, new technology was needed. The development of DNA and RNA sequencing has revolutionized the field of oncology. Next Generation Sequencing, or NGS, is a technology used to analyze the genetic profile of tumors and circulating tumor DNA, identifying a wide array of genetic alterations to guide targeted therapy and treatment decisions. By sequencing the DNA and RNA of cancer cells, NGS can identify a wide range of genetic mutations, copy number variations, and other genetic alterations that drive cancer progression. The detailed genetic information helps in understanding the unique characteristics of each tumor, guiding personalized treatment plans. Using NGS, doctors can choose therapies that specifically target the molecular characteristics of a patient's cancer. Let's walk through real-life examples of patients undergoing biomarker testing. Consider the case of Mary, a 60-year-old woman with a stage 2 breast cancer. Biomarker testing shows the tumor is hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative. A more sophisticated multi-gene test, known as Oncotype DX test, showed a recurrence score of 10, which is low. Based on the results of this test, her oncologist determined she did not need chemotherapy after surgery. This type of biomarkers and multi-gene assays have spared many patients from the damaging effects of chemotherapy in the setting of hormone receptor positive HER2 negative early stage breast cancer. Next, imagine another patient, Jane, who has been diagnosed with stage one breast cancer. Before surgery, her oncologist decides to perform a biopsy to test for the presence of hormone receptors and HER2, proteins that can promote the growth of cancer cells. The tissue sample is collected and sent to a laboratory where it's analyzed for these biomarkers. The results reveal that Jane's cancer is hormone receptor negative and HER2 positive, meaning she's likely to benefit from targeted therapies designed to block HER2. Based on this biomarker test result, Jane was treated with HER2-targeted therapy even before surgery. Think about Jessica, a breast cancer patient with advanced metastatic breast cancer, whose disease is progressing despite hormone therapy in combination with a CDK4-6 inhibitor, a new type of therapy. A liquid biopsy showed a mutation in the estrogen receptor on circulating tumor DNA. Based on this biomarker result, the patient was treated with l which is an effective treatment for this type of cancer. Consider the case study of John, a lung cancer patient whose treatment was revolutionized by biomarker analysis. Molecular testing of the tumor revealed a mutation in the epidermal growth factor receptor gene, also known as EGFR, a common driver of non-small cell lung cancer. Armed with this information, John's oncologist prescribed an EGFR inhibitor, a targeted therapy designed to block the signals from the mutated gene. 
This personalized treatment not only slowed the progression of Jones cancer, but also minimized side effects compared to traditional chemotherapy. Another application of biomarker testing is monitoring tumor progression and real-time adjustments in treatment strategies, enhancing their effectiveness. For example, if a biomarker test and imaging studies show that a tumor is not responding to a specific therapy, doctors can quickly switch to a different treatment plan, optimizing the chances of success. This dynamic approach ensures that patients receive the most effective and appropriate treatment throughout their cancer journey. Emerging technologies such as NGS, liquid biopsies, and molecular imaging are expected to further enhance the detection and application of biomarkers in cancer treatment. Artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms are being developed to analyze complex biomarker data, providing more accurate and comprehensive insights into cancer biology and treatment response. Clinical trials are needed to help doctors decide what is the best course of treatment based on biomarker changes. Despite all these advances, accessibility and cost are significant barriers, as advanced biomarker testing can be expensive and not widely available in all healthcare settings. Additionally, the complexity of interpreting biomarker data requires specialized expertise which may not be readily available in all regions. Therefore, we need to develop more affordable and accessible testing methods. In summary, biomarkers are transforming the landscape of cancer treatment by enabling personalized and precise medical care. Understanding and utilizing biomarkers can significantly improve treatment outcomes, providing hope and better quality of life for cancer patients. Thank you for engaging with this discussion. If you found this information helpful, please share it with others who might benefit. For those with experiences or questions about biomarker testing, I invite you to share them in the comments section. Together, we can empower each other with knowledge and support in the fight against cancer.